Hello, I'm technically not a technician, and today's video is about Antimicro X, a free Joy 2 key alternative. With this video, we hope to explore how to set up your controller profile and show you how to set up profiles for different games. For those of you that are unaware, Joy 2 Key and Antimicro X are both software utilities that you can use to bind your keyboard keys to your joystick or game controller. In short, you set up this utility so that if you hit a button on your game controller, it will act as a keyboard key. Antimicro X is very well documented and seems to have been in development for the past three years. It's also my understanding that this is a branch of an older version simply called Antimicro. Not only is Antimicro X well documented, but you can easily find the download repository on the Antimicro X GitHub page. I'll make sure to link to it in the description. For today's video, I'll be using the Windows EXE file, also known as the Windows Executable file. I'll be doing this because it's easy and matches the hardware I'm using. If your needs are different, please act accordingly. You will need to download your file to an area you can easily find. I'll be using my downloads folder. Once downloaded, find and double-click the executable that corresponds to Antimicro X, and you'll be presented with an installer. This installer shouldn't be much different from the ones you've used in the past. In short, you'll need to hit next, then click on I agree. Please feel free to read what you're agreeing to. It's a bit more than we need to get into today. You'll also be asked what directory and paths you wish to use. In this area, please use the settings that work best for you. After you've made your selections, you'll be asked to click on next one last time, and the installer will get started and automate the rest of your install. Once done, we can click finish, and start working on setting up our program. Before opening Antimicro X, let's speak about keyboard and mouse bindings for our games. As I'm sure you can tell by the thumbnail, I enjoy classic first-person games, and everyone binds their system differently. This is the way it should be, and in truth, I moved a ton as a kid and didn't have much as far as gaming guidance. With that statement said, I personally don't use WASD, I use the arrow keys. Again, there is no right or wrong answer here. However, you do need to know what keys on your keyboard correspond to what game action. For example, you will need to know what key you press to move about, look around, jump, and attack. Just to name a few basics. For standard, simple run and gun first person games, I personally use a standard keyboard binding layout, as you can see pictured. We'll be using this as a base for most of my games. I also use a basic, standard mouse binding. These work for me, however, I'm sure your bindings will be different. The important thing for you to know is what keys you've got bound and what actions those keys are bound to. Be sure to take note of your bindings, as we'll be taking those keyboard keys you've bound to the game, and we will tie them to your game controller buttons. This will let us play games that have crappy or no joystick support using any PC-compatible controller that your OS supports. For our basic setup and for this guide, we'll be taking each of the keyboard bindings and we'll be setting up our controller as seen here in this image. Again, I didn't want to get too complicated with our basic layout, and we'll only be setting up the basic game controls on this profile. Our next game profile will have more key bindings. Also, you may wish to use a different basic layout, and that's not an issue, use what works for you and your games. Let's open Antimicro X and get started with setting up our basic controller profile. I'll be presenting to you on two screens, so you can both see my hands and get a look at the program interface at the same time. I believe this is the best way to show you how intuitive the program is when it comes to converting these controller signals into keyboard and mouse commands. The short version of how Antimicro X works is that, with your controller plugged in and active, you start the program, which will use the Windows-based drivers to identify all of the available buttons on your controller, and give you the ability to assign a keyboard or mouse command to each controller button. As you can see, we have more controller buttons than we have keyboard and mouse commands to bind. This isn't an issue, as the unused buttons will not affect our controls in any ill manner. So for this profile, we'll only be using bindings for a basic layout. Antimicro X's interface will almost be divided into three sections, the top of which will be my right and left sticks, the next will have my D-pad, and the last will be all of the other buttons available to my controller. I find the best way to identify controller buttons on Antimicro X's interface is to simply press the button and let Antimicro X identify the correlating software marker. After you've found the correlating software marker, simply take your mouse and navigate it to the identified marker and click on it. 
At that time, you'll be presented with a menu that gives you access to the keyboard and the tab at the bottom that lets you switch between accessing your keyboard buttons or your mouse controls. Basically, all we must do once in this menu is use our mouse to select what keyboard or mouse command we wish the controller to use. We're basically done assigning keyboard and mouse commands to our sticks, and it's now time to assign keyboard and mouse commands to our triggers, shoulders, and the A and B buttons. We'll do this by identifying the anti-micro X marker, clicking on that marker, and assigning it to one of the keyboard or mouse commands that are bound in the game. One area that I do wish to note is the analog triggers. I need the right trigger to shoot and the left to jump. These are analog buttons on my controller, and they are the standard left mouse for shoot and right mouse for jump setup on my keyboard. Because they are analog, we get a different menu. However, all we need to do is click on the icon with the no key indicator on the center right side of the menu, and this will let us assign a standard keyboard command to this analog control. The setup will be identical on my left trigger button, and if your triggers don't give you the same message, don't worry, everything is fine. Not everyone's controller is the same, they are not only all built differently, but they don't all have the same drivers. That all said, once both triggers are done, you should now have 100% control of your mouse using the controller. The last two buttons that I want to assign to my controller are the right control key and the zero key on my number pad. These are done in the same manner as the others, and as they are simple standard non-analog buttons, we'll only have to interact with the standard keyboard or mouse selections. We'll now save our first profile. As stated previously, this is a basic layout for basic first-person games like Quake, Quake 2, and Serious Sam's The First and The Second Encounter, and they'll work well for those games. So we'll save this as a basic profile. You can see that I have another profile set up already, and you should know that you can set up as many profiles for as many games as you wish. I'll now minimize Anti-Micro X, as we need it to run in the background, and we'll boot up a test game just to review our basic controls. For this basic Anti-Micro X demo, I've chosen the game Serious Sam, The Second Encounter. This series of games reminds me of Duke Nukem, and even though Serious is in the name, these are not games to be taken very seriously. They are simple, fun to play, and don't make you think much. This video isn't really about the hardware that I'm running. However, I'd like to point out that the unit playing this game is basically old e-waste that's been purchased off of Amazon. It works well for these old games, and e-waste seems to be a buyer's market on Amazon. Next, I want to verify that everything is bound right on my keyboard, and then we'll test out my new controller profile. In truth, you'll probably want to install and set up your games before you really use Anti-Micro X, and really, this is just a demo that it now works off of both your keyboard and mouse as well as your game controller. It looks as if this basic layout profile is working very well, and I'm now able to play this in any game that uses a similar game binding, but what if I've got other games that need different game bindings and controls? Can we set up multiple game and controller profiles? Yes, you can, and I'd like to show you how. We'll need to reopen Anti-Micro X and load the base layout that we've made for first-person games. This profile should load automatically, as Anti-Micro X always loads the last profile used, unless you've changed the defaults. I'm going to use this profile as the basis for the next game, Star Wars Republic Commandos. Because we've already covered how to assign controller buttons to keyboard and mouse commands, I don't wish to really recover that aspect in this section. However, I do wish to show you how I'll be setting these controls up. In truth, the changes to our profile that will be made for Star Wars Republic Commando are very basic. I'll basically be moving the control command and adding five other commands to the profile. These five other commands are used in Star Wars Republic Commando but are not needed in any of the games that use our basic profile. Now that we have the new layout of our new profile configured for Star Wars Republic Commando, we'll need to click on the Save As option, and name our new profile. I'm going to use a simple naming convention, and you should name it whatever makes sense to you. Now that our profile is saved and loaded, let's test the new profile in-game. Because these are older games, and at the time the resolution was for different aspect ratios, Star Wars Republic Commando seems to always want to open in a window. Anti-Micro X only helps you play old games via new controllers, it will not help you fix any other compatibility issues.
With that said, I'll click on the expand window screen, and we should get a full screen experience. Now let's test this new setup out and give Retro Gaming a try on this new age controller. This isn't a setup that I use myself, as I played most of these games on a keyboard and mouse. However, my kids only play with controllers, and this was a great way for all of us to get to play the same games together. In conclusion, if you're looking for a free keyboard to mouse pairing utility, if you're looking for a way to play your old school games with your controller, or if you're looking for an alternative to Joy 2 Key, as you can see, Anti Micro X may be the answer. I also feel that I should go on record as saying that this DIY guide was not requested by anyone affiliated with Anti Micro X, nor is anyone paying me to make this content. I just really love great software, and Anti Micro X is pretty great. I'd like to thank you for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, I'd like to ask that you help me beat the YouTube algorithm by pressing the like and notification buttons. Leave me a comment, I do my best to respond to everyone. If you've not done so yet, please subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. All of these are small clicks of the mouse for you, but to this small channel, those clicks mean the world. Thank you.